Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. So I'm going to just jump right back into trying to make all the ember stuff work. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to use the ember bore. I believe it needs to be at or at least around bedrock level. So I'm going to create a large mine shaft that goes all the way down to bedrock. Um, I think I'll do it right here, kind of behind the storage. And I think I'll do a 4x4. And what I'll probably end up doing as a way to get up and as a way to get up and down, I'll probably um, I mean the easiest way would be just to make a huge staircase from the very bottom to the top, but I think I actually want like a like a spiral staircase going around. I think that'd be pretty cool. There we go. All the way down to bedrock. Alright, now I'm gonna carve a staircase. Out of the outside of this shaft. Staircase is complete. Now it's relatively easy to get in and out of here. Kind of kind of a jerky motion going up these stairs, but eh, I'll take it. Now I think I'm gonna make a little room down here. I'm not gonna put the ember board just like right here. I'm gonna leave this shaft free of anything except maybe some uh, tubes and whatever needs to go to the surface from this machine. So I'm gonna make a separate room for the bore. I think this should be enough room. Let's put the bore down. I think it's kind of a multi-block structure, not that you make it out of multi-blocks, but I think when you put it down it turns into something bigger. Yeah, it does. Okay. So this should be boring into the bedrock, basically, and I think it'll make us embers. Um, I'm a little bit confused, though. It only has this one hole. I know we need to feed it with something that's combustible, so wood or coal or anything like that, and that's what it uses to run. So I would guess that's probably what goes through here, but if coal goes into there, then where do the embers come out of? Do I have any other parts that need to go with it? Ember activator, bin, ember emitter. These are all separate. These are like for processing the embers once you have them. Well, let's just try pumping some coal into it and see what happens. Although, also, um, I also took this. Let's see if this has anything useful. This bore is the earliest means of extracting the mysterious energies known as ember from the world's core. It will only function at a layer where bedrock can appear, or the layer directly above the bedrock layers. When furnace fuel is pumped into its center block, it will come to life with its blades spinning. While active, it will occasionally mine up shards of pure crystallized ember energy of various sizes, which can be extracted from the bore using item pumps. Oh, okay, so it sounds like you can... Yeah, fuel definitely goes into the center, and it sounds like you can just extract it from anywhere, I guess. The uh, shards. Yeah, sounds like it. Okay, let's see if we can power this thing. Um, I'll put down a chest. Whoop. All right, looks like it connected. Um, let's try the bit of his coal. Make sure it's not getting stuck. Nope, it definitely went in. Oh, I see something spinning. <laughs> Some weird little thing spinning. Um, I think normally it has like teeth down below that you can see. Because typically bedrock isn't actually completely flat. And so when you set it down, you can usually see kind of underneath it. At least when I've seen screenshots and stuff, that's been the case. But for whatever reason, the bedrock is completely flat. So I think the blades are just hidden. Anyway, so it's probably building up ember. And if I put that there, maybe it could be that it's not working, or as in the extractor isn't working, or it could be simply that it hasn't made any ember yet. I don't think it makes ember extremely fast. Um, I should probably figure that out before I go building the transfer pipe all the way up to the surface, huh? Yeah, I tried it for a while, and I also put some transfer nodes in a couple other different places, and it it's either extraordinarily slow 
or more likely, I think you actually need to use an item bump from the Embers mod itself. I don't think you can use a transfer node to take out of it. And an item pump, let's see, lead, for the item pipe, item pump, caminite. Uh, yeah, redstone's kind of the problem. So I'm going to need to find some more redstone. I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Jesus Christ, what was that? I guess God smited me and set my forest on fire because I made a cup of tea. Um, this is the problem. Shit. Let me take a sip of my tea and think about this. Um, fighting fire time. I don't have any building. Oh wait, 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 wait. Scaffolding. There. Holy shit! Everything's on fire. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh no. Okay. Change the tactic. Water. Lots of water. Lots of iron. Uh, oh, fuck, they gotta be plates. Ah. Get out of there. How's my forest doing, huh? It's not doing terrible. I should get my scaffolding back. Okay, that tree's good. I think... Is it out? I think this burned out. Ah, oh, Christ. For a second, I thought my whole force was gonna burn down. I do not know what the hell it was. It's not done. Not my canopy. You will not take the majesty from my forest. Those could just burn out there, that's fine. Oh, uh, that is not fine. Guess I really only needed one thing of water, huh? Again. Those will just burn out. I don't think they'll spread. Just to be safe. Now you can't go too far out with these things. Oh, 
<sighs> okay, not too bad. A little bit of a gap in the canopy there, but... Could have been a lot worse. Especially considering most of my structures are built entirely out of wood. Whew. I think I need to spend some time relaxing in my garden. No, I can never relax! <laughs> You're terrifying, little baby zombie. <laughs> Osmium sword. Eight attack damage compared to seven. 1.6 attack speed, same. Hmm. I think that might be better. However, this thing has sharpness and unbreaking and mending. I'm gonna stick with it. I like the enchantments. Anyway. Yeah, let's do some gardening. Nice and relaxing. Farming is done. Much calmer now. Before I start making the pumps and stuff for embers, I'm going to repair my pickaxe, and also, now that I've got over 200 redstone, um, I want to upgrade its speed a bit. So that should repair it all the way. Mm -hmm. So if we put a stack of redstone, let's see what's going to happen to the speed. So right now it's at 12. Stack of redstone makes it 17. Nice. Yeah, from 12 to 17 with just a stack. Oh wait, it didn't even use up the whole stack. So I think if I put more redstone on it, it's going to take up another modifier. Yes, you can see the modifiers here. Go from 3 to 2. So depending on kind of like what tier you have, it's going to take up more modifiers. Well, I'll toss a bit more on there. Alright, this should be substantially faster at mining stone. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Okay. On to making the iron pumps and stuff. Let's see if I can get this thing to work now. Got about a stack and a half of item pipes and eight item pumps. And I've also got a bunch more fuel for this thing. It looks like it's... Wow, it's still running from the fuel that I put in it a long time ago, it seems. Uh, but anyway, let's just put in a grapton more. So, item pump. Mmm, doesn't look like it connected. Maybe from the side? Okay, I believe I need to put something like a mechanical core on this thing, which is going to give me more inputs and outputs. So that way we don't just have this one input-output. I think I might even be able to extract the embers from here, but obviously I want to be able to get fuel in there. And also extract from it. So I think we can plop that on top, and then we have access to all these. So we should be able to just hook this back up. I should still be able to pump stuff into it. And then item pump. Yep, now that connects. Soon item pipe, and let's just make sure that this is actually working. Just gonna pipe it into here. Um, I believe you need to activate the pump using a redstone signal, so let's put a lever on it. Activate it. Aha! Yeah. So this thing has been working. Ember shard and ember crystal. Okay, cool. Um, well, I guess I'm gonna make a pipe... That goes all the way up to the surface, so I can automatically get the crystals and shards without having to come down here. I don't know how to tell whether this thing's actually running. Because I can't see underneath it. But just based on how long it was running before with just a little bit of coal and the fact that I stuck an entire stack in there, it's probably going to run for a long time. I hope. There we go. All the way up to this chest. 
Right. Well, now we've got the Ember Boar going, we're getting shards. Now, what the heck do we do with them? Well, um... Let's try to figure out how all this stuff works together before I really figure out where to put it. Hopefully I've got enough of the basic parts that I can get this kind of up and going. Almost nighttime. Feels dark. Yeah, it's almost nighttime. Alright, so Ember Activator is probably the first part. Activates the embers. Um, I think the Cinder Plinth is the thing that melts stuff down. Hope I'm doing this right. Or maybe, actually, for some reason. Whoa. Hmm? I was hiding behind the tree. I have the vague memory of somebody putting the cinder plinth on top of the bin. I'm going to try that. bin and then cinder plinth. Let's hope that works. And then since I believe this thing is, yeah, it activates the ember, so that's going to have the ember emitter. Does it go there or does it go there? Not sure. Let's try the top. And this gets the ember receptor. Oh, man, that got destroyed easy. Oh, I'll put the receptor right there. And I think we bind them to each other using the hammer. Did it do something? Don't know. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's just try throwing... What's the difference between an ember shard and an ember crystal? What's the uses? Crystal cell, mantle cartridge, alchemy pedestal, beam cannon. Oh, one ember crystal can turn into a bunch of ember shards. Okay. So it's used for some stuff, but I don't think I need any of these things, at least not at the moment. But for now, I'll just use up the shards that I've got. So do I, like, click on this? No, okay, so maybe I have to pump it in. Let's try pumping it in. Put a shard in there. Item pump. It's pumping it. Yes. Is it doing something? It pumped one, but it might just be like in the pump or something. Okay, I think I'm doing this wrong. One sec. Aha! There we go. I was pretty much doing it right. It just looks like you can't have the item pump be just a single block between the chest and the thing. You have to have an item pump and then at least one item pipe. Maybe that's so it knows what direction you want to pump stuff. Otherwise, otherwise I guess it's ambiguous, huh? You know, do you want to pump stuff from the chest or do you want to pump stuff from the activator? But this way, since the pump is on one side, it knows where to take it from. Right, so that is activating the ember things. Good, good. And yeah, I forgot, I kind of figured that out using the Eye of the Ancients, by the way. I forgot that there's the in-game manual in the form of that. I should probably use it. So why isn't that working? Let's see if we can find out. Small copper and iron device capable of extracting ember from an ember container must be bound to a valid ember receiving block such as an ember receptor or an ember relay using a tinker hammer. Right click on a block you want to buy in the emitter to, then right click any emitter. The emitter will... Oh, it needs a redstone signal as well. Aha.
Mm. Does the receptor need a redstone signal too? When placed in the ember container, the copper core the receptor can accept ember from air and conduct them into the container it is connected to. It can be placed on any face of a block. Doesn't say it needs that. Ah, right. God, I remember that when I was watching a video. You don't, um, you don't sneak click this and then sneak click this. You sneak click this and then just normally click this. Okay. All right, making progress. We've got embers going. We've got embers transferring into the cinder plinth. What do? Oh, God! What did you just do? It just transformed my sword into an ash pile. Why? Thank you so much. That um, tells me that I really don't want to have any of my good tools on my hotbar. Good thing I didn't take any of the really important ones. Right, so if you right click any item on that, it burns it into ash. And then I guess it looks like you can just extract it out of the bin directly, just by like right clicking it. Yeah, it looks like you can put stuff in and out of the bin just by right clicking it, even though you can't really see what it is. Right. Form of controlled item destruction. Any item can be placed into the upper slot of the block or pumped in using automated methods. When the plinth is given ember power, it will begin to burn the item. The lead structure of the plinth absorbs released energies of the burned item, reducing it into a form of pure ash. The ash will either appear in the world as a dropped item or be placed into a bin beneath the cinder plinth if one is available. Aha. Huh. Okay, so I've succeeded at making ash. But I think that's just the kind of the tip, the, one of the very small things that I can do with embers. But I think that's one of the important things. Let's take a look at the quest book. Did I finish any quest? No. Ember? Oh, I need four ember crystals. Huh. Oh, and you get 10 ember shards, two mechanical cores, a bunch of resonating ore. Hmm. Let's see how many we've gathered up while I've been waiting. Oh, just two shards. Still just got one crystal. It looks like one of the next things I might want to get, or at least start working towards, is the metal alloyer. This will allow me to make all sorts of important things. Including the stuff I need to get into Batania, because the mana spreader, which is absolutely vital, you can't really do anything in Batania without a mana spreader, uh, requires... What is it? Rose? Requires rose gold ingot, which is made in a metal alloy. And we can... Um, bowls, easy, iron furnace, easy. Ah, oh, crap, where was I? Uh, here. Obsidian pressure plate, I'm sure that's easy. Uh, the hard part is Dawnstone, but that's an embers thing. So we've got some of the basic infrastructure to make this. We don't have everything just yet, but we have the embers. But I believe it is made in... Yeah, it's made in a stamper. Copper, Kamenite, block of iron. Yeah, we can totally make a stamper. I think we need some other stuff though, not just the stamper, I think we need something to actually melt metal down, and I'm not sure what that is, but yeah, it looks like if we make a couple more a couple more ember things, we'll have what we need to make rose gold or rose ingot I'm just gonna make a iron sword real quick here, in the interim between having a real sword, I don't feel like making a real one probably not until I actually get the tool forge that can make tier 2 swords I just don't do much fighting. Anyway, so I was looking at what it's going to take to make this stuff from ember that I need. And it's going to take a lot of kamenite, and I keep having to make kamenite, and I hate it. Ugh. Not only because you have to manually dry it, um, but because it takes bone meal, which re requires bone. Which you basically pretty much can only get from skeletons. At least that's the most reasonable way to get it. Unless you want to go hardcore into bees. <laughs> no thanks. So, instead of manually hunting skeletons, painstakingly, I feel like what I should do 
is make a little bit of a mob farm. Nothing super fancy, but I want to make a little bit of a mob farm. One that probably won't have any sort of automatic picking up of the loot. I don't think I have the technology to do that, but I should be able to automatically kill them. And I think I'll put in a light switch, and if I uh, activate the light switch, it'll light up the whole mob spawning room enough to the point where mobs won't spawn anymore, so... I'm thinking I can just like flip a light switch, open the door, go inside, collect the loot, come back out. So not totally automated, but still pretty good, I think. And I think I have the stuff to make it. Yeah, um, let's get to it. I'm gonna get it together. Alright, I think I've got all the basics down, so I think I'm gonna make it out of chiseled cobblestone. Just gonna try out a different texture, see how it looks. I would make it out of wood, but I think cobblestone's more appropriate because I need it to be sort of secure, and cobblestone is definitely stronger than wood. Uh, I may or may not use the trapdoors, we'll see if that works out, I'll explain that later. So the basic idea for moving and killing the mobs that spawn is going to be using vector plates to move them and spikes to kill them. Pretty simple recipe, just some slime balls, sugar, and stone. Vector plates just move anything that's on top of them. I've never used them before, but I've seen them used. And then this is the recipe, just basically a bunch of iron to make iron spikes, which will kill anything that touches them, including you. You know, I don't know if four is going to be enough. Uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, it just depends on how I orient the vector plates. Four should be perfectly fine. Okay, now when it comes to choosing where to build this thing, I do have to be a little bit picky about where I put it because mobs won't spawn if you're very close to them. They'll only spawn, I don't know what the range is, like 20 or 30 blocks or something like that. So I need to make sure I don't put it too close to my base. It needs to be far enough away that they will actually spawn. So maybe just like right here. I have a single torch. Boop. This should be far enough away that they'll spawn. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna clear this out a bit and start to put down a foundation. Nice little spot for it. Let's get the foundation down. Yeah, I think it's gonna look alright. Yeah, I like it. Now I think... Uh, I'm gonna do some chiseling bit stuff work, uh, like some chiseling bits work after, but I guess I'll just lay it down as like a big kind of blocky structure, and then chisel it from there. Hello, Concussion Creeper. Concuss me. Thank you. It teleports you too. Alright, so we got a big old box right now. So... Let's start to lay down the vector plates and see how this works. Um, so let's have them all go forwards to begin with. Then have them go sideways. Ah, and I ran out. Let me go make more. Alright, where was I? Did I just break that? How? Eh, I'll just put it right out there. So these go to the inside. I want to direct all the enemies to the spikes. I only have four spikes, so i got to make good use of them. Um, I guess I'll put the four spikes here. Right there, there, and then... I'll fill this in. Okay. That way, no matter where you are, in fact, I, well, I can't even fight against these, really. I sort of can? Weirdly slowly? If you're in the center, you just go straight to the center, and if you're on the side and you let go, you go forwards, and then to the side, and then forwards. So it's going to smash you right into the spikes. 
No. Gotta be careful here. Gotta make my out. Nice. Don't want these iron spikes to kill me. Come on, get in the doorway. Ah. Oh, I can't put them there right because these vector plates are on top of it, so technically this block space is taken. Huh. Well, in that case, I probably just need those two. But, oh, oops. Oh! Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh. Mm. Mm. Give me that. Give me that! <gasps> oh no! Oh, 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 oh! Get me out of here! Oh, Christ! Making mob killing rooms is like always so freaking dangerous. Thank you! There we go. Mm. No, no mobs can spawn in here at the moment because there's light, but take that. <laughs> Even the items get pushed there. Let me just grab that torch. And there we go. Um, so yeah, no mobs are going to spawn there at the moment also because I'm very close to it, but... If I go far away, they should start spawning. The only thing I need to work on now is how do I collect the resources? I could just break these and then the items will kind of get pushed forwards and I can pick them up. That totally works. Um, I do wonder though, if using chisel and bits I can make it so that I don't actually need to break these. What if I just... <sighs> the way light works in Minecraft is odd. Oh yeah, I've got the light meter displaying. Um, so you can press a button to see basically how much light is on any one block. And if it's red, that means like, danger, danger, enemies will absolutely spawn here. Which is what you want for an enemy spawning room. Uh, but obviously, if you have light inside of here, so if I make a hole, then sunlight will get in, and mobs won't really spawn very much, if at all, in the mob room. So you don't want any actual light to really get inside. Now there's sort of ways around that. If you put slab, if I put slabs down here, for example, it would cut off the light. As in technically no light would get inside, it would be completely pitch black, however you could kind of see inside through the slab, because there'd be half a block visible. I have no idea why that's the case, but it is. So now the question is though, what about with chisel and bits? What if I take away everything except just like one layer of bits on the top? So almost the entire block is gone. Will light still get inside? I have no idea. Let's uh let's try it, I guess. Let me turn off this display. Yeah, so let me try just Oh, that's the wrong tool. No wonder it wasn't working. Let me try just eating connect plane. So I'm just gonna try to eat like most of the block. Where does it end? There, so there's one layer of bits left. Oh crap. I don't have my bit bag. Come here. Oh no. Disaster. Okay. There we go. Give him my tool back. So you saw the items pour out, that's good. So that means the items are able to fit through this gap. Oh, gotta take one more layer off here. There we go. But what about light? Is light getting inside? Let me turn this back on. I guess I'll break these. And let me put this down here. I hear something. Oh, 
It's a little sheep. Let me go sleep. Okay, so it would appear just having a single layer of bits here is not working, because these here should be red if there was no light getting inside. Jesus. So what if I take these and put in slabs? Can't even see inside, but I'm pretty confident that that is making it pitch dark. Um, hmm. So what if I just make a slab's worth, but starting from the top, of chiseled bits? Maybe that'll work. Oops. It's still not turning red. You can see the tiny, tiny bit of red in the corners from the other pieces. Does it ever turn red? I guess it's okay if it's not red, though. Maybe it's because that's where the spikes are? It's probably because that's where the spikes are, so maybe it's fine. Yeah, maybe it was fine how it was. Maybe it's just because the spikes are there, preventing stuff from spawning. Alright, I'm gonna try it. Just gotta put these vector plates back. Um, I need to rotate them. <laughs> Please tell me I can do that with... maybe this? Yes! Good. I could even continue to put vector plates here to make the item just come all the way out. I guess I might as well do that, huh? Oh right, I can't, I can't put any vector plates there because technically that block space is taken. Um, yeah, this is fine then. Alright, I'm just gonna run away. Far enough away that enemies should be able to spawn in there, and let's just see if the thing works. Aha! It just worked. Yeah, apparently the, uh, the chisel bits weren't working, so I just completely covered it. That's fine, I, I could do some more experimentation to figure out exactly how many chisel bits could be there, or maybe none at all. But, this is easy enough. So I should be able to do this. And where's the items? Hmm. Do zombies ever not drop anything? I guess it's possible. That was like a full minute though and only one zombie spawned. That's incredibly slow. One thing I could try to do is if I wanted like an extreme amount of enemies to spawn, which I guess I do, I can make Cursed Earth. Right-click soil with a drop of evil. So anything that's cursed will, as it says, aggressively spawn mobs when in darkness. So I looked up a drop of evil. And it looks like it's a 10% chance drop from Wither Skeletons. I could find Wither Skeletons somewhere in the nether. It could be difficult, it could be easy, it's really just random. Um, sometimes you can find Wither Skeleton spawners. So I'd probably look for one in a fortress inside of the nether. And yeah, could get lucky, find them early. Might not get lucky. Could be a long, long time. But if I could get just a single drop, then I could make Cursed Earth. That would be very nice. I could make a journey to the Nether. That would be kind of fun. But my armor's garbage. And if I did that, then I definitely would want to make an actual proper sword. A tinker sword. I certainly have the material to make a full set of armor, though. Maybe I'll do that. Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, nothing. I don't know why it's so slow. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode.
So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm probably gonna go to the nether because I really want to get that mob farm up and going. <laughs>